Welcome to a very exciting beekeeping episode here on the Daddy Curbs Farm. I would like to say that if you are a beekeeper and you want to become a better beekeeper, record yourself doing it and watch it again later. Watch all the way to the end and you'll find out why. Today I'm going to start in reverse order. I'm going to do the, the last one first. The one I did last last week. We're going to do it first because I have something that I want to try. Right now this hive has a 7 and 5 eighths medium. It's the larger medium and a deep. They're not really, at least last week, they weren't really utilizing the deep. So I've been thinking for a while, what if I had a couple of hives that were strictly the mediums, no deeps. Uh, I'm talking about the 7 and 5 eighths. I can make those odd boxes that I have be the brood nest in two hives because I have plenty of them. And I don't really like mixing them in the supers. It just confuses things. So if I have two hives here on this stand that are both using the 7 and 5 8 medium as brood nest, I could use up six, possibly eight boxes right here. This one has brood already, so it's a good candidate for starting a hive like that. I like to always turn the, the top cover or the lid over and just make sure there's no queen hanging out there. I don't see her here, so we're okay. We'll give a little puff of smoke just so it wafts over the top. Now because I want this other box that's sitting right in front of the camera on here, I need to take this box off first and then inspect the deep frame. They do have a little more activity down here than they did last week. I got a nifty new tool. This is a, a hive, uh, it attaches to the side of the hive and you can hang your frames on it while you're working. That way you don't drop them. I don't expect a lot going on down here in this deep, but I want to make sure that they're not putting brood down there. So far, nothing. They do have nectar in the top of this one. I don't see any eggs. I'm looking at the bees that are on the frame just to make sure that there's no queen on here. All right, now we're just gonna start moving these over and seeing what's going on. Looks like there's a lot of nectar, possibly honey. It looks pretty thick, so it might already be honey down in there. I don't see a queen bee on here. Sometimes I miss them. And we'll turn it over and check out this side. Hopefully I don't drop any frames like I did last week. They got some pollen and nectar in this one. But again, it's all just stores. Hopefully when I get into that top box, I'll see the queen so I'm confident that I'm not uh, leaving her, you know, putting her somewhere she shouldn't be. Oh yeah, lots of pollen, lots of nectar. So they are definitely moving stores down in this one. I don't see any brood. All right. I'm feeling pretty good about this box being something that I can move out. And that's pretty much an empty frame some drawn comb on this one but the other side is completely empty all right so what i'd like to do is move this box out of the way put that other seven and five eighths medium on here
Mm. Well, that's not good. Okay, this is the one that has the brood nest, and I want it on the bottom, and then I'll inspect it. Okay, now that this one is uh, located on the bottom board, I'll pull these out one at a time and just look and see what, what condition that brood is in. It's a pretty full frame. I gotta be very careful. And this one is a lot of honey. Honey on one side and a lot of honey on the other side. I don't see a queen on this one. I took out the second frame. I think that's fairly typical. Beekeepers take a second frame out just to make sure they have room. And then looking at this one, it is honey. And a little bit of drone comb on the other side. So I'll put that one back in. That's the first one. And then now that the second one is out, I can scoot all the rest of them over and have room to work. I know a lot of you already know these things, but I've been told that people like how I talk through this. Even though I'm not the bestest ever beekeeper in the world, it does help other people understand what's going on and possibly, maybe, they can learn something. And better yet, oh, I thought somebody was behind me. Better yet, you guys understand what I'm doing, those of you who are experienced and you can help me. For example, a couple weeks ago, I think I, I posted, I was putting uh, scrap pieces of that towel, the, the towel pieces that come off of the, um, for the beetle traps. And I thought, well, I'll just throw it in the smoker and use it as smoke. But somebody had said, uh, every time you burn that in your burner, you're spewing toxic gases all over your bees when you smoke your bees and that had never even really crossed my mind so uh, I don't know exactly how much of that is happening but if it's possible and it seems very realistic and possible I'm not gonna do it so thank you whoever made that comment okay there's a lot of brood in this one so the this is part of the brood nest that queen bee could possibly be on here. There's brood on both sides of this one. Those bees are moving pretty quickly. In fact, uh, a lot of bees taking care of this larva, so I, don't, I didn't see any cluster of bees. I'm guessing that she is not here, so we're gonna just keep looking. I don't have to see her. It just makes me feel better when I know where she is. And it's kind of fun spotting the queen. Okay, here we are on another good bit of brood. This is all all brood. This this hive is doing really well as far as making making baby bees. Now you can tell if there had been a queen in here within the last so many days based on the level of uh, how many eggs or mature larvae you see because it takes three days for a queen, or I mean for an egg, to turn into larva. So if you see an egg, then you have had a queen within the last three days. So that's, that's two frames of brood there. Wow, these rubber mats that I put on the ground are hot. And there is so much brood in this one. This one looks like a lot of possibly a lot of drone brood. Larger cells. Just glancing. I don't see a queen here either. But you see, can you see those larger cells on there? 
That's quite possibly drone brood, which is male bees, the bees that will go out and uh, hopefully mate with uh, queens in the area to help keep the bee population in this area very healthy. A little less, this is normal size brood, normal, you know, not, not queens, not, um, not drones. Let me see if there's any eggs in here. Eggs are very diff oh, I do see an egg. I see a bunch of eggs. So my queen has been in here for at least three days. I mean, not been in here for three days, but within the last three days, I have had an active queen. I don't have to see her because even if, in fact, she's not here, uh, the, the eggs that are here, wow, that is hot. I gotta put my knees on something else. Even if the queen is not present, there are eggs that these bees, if they need to, can turn into a queen. They can build a queen cell around one of these eggs and make a new queen. There's a little bit of controversy in, this, in areas that have the uh, aggressive Africanized bees on whether it's safe or healthy or good to let them make new queens. But it's better for them to make a new queen and the colony survive and then you can requeen later than to lose the whole colony. All right, I'm not gonna dig around too much further. I really would like to see her, but I don't see her and I don't feel the need to keep digging. So I'm gonna put this back. This brood nest now is on the bottom and is the seven and five eighths medium frames. The normal medium that most people use is six and five eighths, and then the nine, uh, nine and five eighths is considered the deep. Most people, I mean, the, the standard is using the deep frame for the uh, brood nest, the bottom boxes, and the uh, six and five eighths for everything above that. Hopefully, I was gentle enough and I didn't hurt that queen. I can put their honey back in. They have some honey here, a lot of honey actually. I can put it back in. Now this is another seven and five eighths box placed on top, ready to go. Now I am gonna try to shake the bees out of that other box into this one so that they're not over here in this box and I don't take them away and uh, introduce them to another hive. Normally one swift shake knocks most of the bees down into the box below. Over here in this deep box that I just took off, I am going to take the time to try to organize these frames in the hive, in this box, with housel positioning, meaning that the, the Ys of the frames, I'll show you another video that explains that. It's really difficult to see that with these black frames or black foundation. <laughs> we'll get this hive all closed up. So that leaves us with a deep body with comb filled frames, all positioned according to the housel positioning. And maybe, maybe we can get it put on this hive right here. This one had a lot of honey in the top box. They don't really need honey right now because they're bringing in plenty of food. That is just full of honey. Beautiful, beautiful honey. I'm checking out the bottom of the frame to make sure that there's no uh, brood coming up into that.
It looks like the queen has not moved up. That's a good thing for me today. There are quite a few queen cups on this one, but they're all empty. I'm gonna start transferring some of this honey over here into a nuke box. Just brushing the bees off so I don't carry them to the house. Now that all those are transferred, that leaves us with this empty box on top. And this is the hive that had possibly the uh, young queen last week. I'm gonna see if she made her way back to the hive after mating, see if there's any eggs. I think it's around 90 degrees today, it's very hot. It's a beautiful day, but being in this bee suit for a while, uh, if you're not careful, it can create some problems. All right, those bees are really, really active on the bottom of this one. We don't know if that young queen, if she's in here, if she's gone, if she's mating. We don't really know. There's a lot of bees hanging on to the bottom. Sometimes when they cluster up like that, that's a good indication that there could be a queen there. Yeah, they're clustering up on the bottoms. I gotta see if I, I'm only in the uh, fourth frame. This is all just nectar and pollen. It would be really nice to see some eggs to let me know that she's here and she's busy. There's plenty of room in this one, meaning that there are empty cells with no pollen or nectar. It's kind of a sporadic pattern because they put nectar or pollen in a lot of them, but I don't see any eggs so far. There are eggs. Yay! That means my queen made it out, made it back, and I'm not gonna dig around. I'm gonna put this together. That was a lot of eggs on that one. Try to put these in the same position that they were. Now I'm gonna gamble on this one and say that it's okay to put that other hive box that has those deep drawn frames on top of here because it's springtime, she's busy. Uh-oh, do I see something in here? Hold on, let me check something. See him clustering on that one? That's a lot of bees. What I thought I saw is a large queen cup that could become a queen cell right here. Oh, there's several queen cups on here. I'm gonna look in there, see if I can see. It is empty. I'm gonna go ahead and take that queen cup off. Can you see it right there? Just, just pop the top of it off right there. a full box of drawn comb. I'm trying to put it on so I don't squash bees. Let me stop the video right here. That video was shot six days ago. Today's Friday, that was last Saturday. And I've been editing that video throughout the week in the evenings as I've had time. And I cannot help but to observe and reflect on how rough I was being with that, that hive that I was putting the deep on. Actually, it's that one right there. In the moment, I felt like I was doing fine, but being able to see that, it really helps me be a better person and a better beekeeper because I can reflect on that and I can say, man, what, what was causing me to be 
so rough and, and insensitive to the bees that were on the bottom of the frames there. I'm not making excuses, but I can tell you one of the things was I was extremely hot. It was really hot that day. I wasn't well hydrated. And by the time I got done with this hive and moved on to that hive, I was exhausted. I was ready to be done. I shouldn't have even started on that hive over there. I should have just been done. Uh, I suffered that day for it. When I went into the, uh, the house, I was physically exhausted, wore out. I felt like I had been beat up. Uh, and um, I, it, was, it was near heat exhaustion. And I was in that bee jacket for a while. I shouldn't have pushed myself that far and the bees also suffered for that. That hive had the new queen in it so potentially I could have been squashing a queen and that's not a good thing. So being able to watch myself on video as I edit helps me be a better beekeeper and a better person. Now hopefully I didn't cause any damage but I do need to uh, take that to heart. Another thing that probably caused me to to um, be a little more rough besides the fact that I was exhausted and overheated was that I was kneeling down on my knees and the angle of putting those frames in getting getting my shoulder to put that thing in level was uh, difficult uh, I didn't realize it in the moment but as I was watching myself I thought kneeling down is probably not the best position to be putting frames back in the, to the hive so before you guys go nuts and uh, tackle me in the comments, uh, know that I noticed that and I'm reflecting on that and I am going to be better about standing up, getting in a better position and being more gentle with those frames. And if I feel like I'm exhausted and overheated, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna button up whatever hive I'm in and walk away, go get some water. So being that that was six days ago, the next inspection is coming up uh, pretty soon maybe even tomorrow I don't know if I'm gonna get out here and check them out but I am excited because I'm curious if my experiment of putting uh, it's actually not that much of an experiment there it's just smaller it's the seven and five eighths but where is it man sometimes it's hard to find those things that one there the one that I was bumping around a lot I maybe prematurely put that deep on top or maybe it was exactly the right thing to do. I don't know. I didn't have anyone to consult. And sometimes when you're out here, you just got to get the job done. And especially when, you know, things aren't going well as far as being overheated. I really need to learn to bring some water out. Maybe sit in the shade for a minute before I move on to the next hive. But lessons learned. We are uh, beekeepers here on the Daddy Curbs farm early on. Five years ago, uh, we were doing beekeeping, but I never really considered myself a beekeeper because I just didn't know anything and I felt so insecure about it all. And I still feel insecure about a lot, but there's just something about doing it for five years in a row, six years now, that uh, I feel like I am, I am a beekeeper. I have hives on the farm and I actively produce uh, healthy hives and honey and the people around me really appreciate that because they get to enjoy a little bit of that sweet reward as well so thank you very much for joining me in this episode thanks for your grace in the comments uh, for those of you who feel the need to continue uh, with the negative comments that's fine i love you too and uh, we'll just have a conversation so thanks again for watching this episode of beekeeping here on the daddy curbs farm i'll talk to you soon